If you're looking for Madden 19 Ultimate Team coins, be sure to head over to muttcoin.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for an 8% discount. Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here and I hope you all are having a great Monday morning. Today I have some really cool information from you coming from, again, the Mutt Leaks Twitter account. I will leave a link to that in the description below. You guys go over there and give them a follow. They're putting out some really great content here, breaking down the actual coding of the game and it's going to help us. So today what we're going to be talking about are the four main factors that determine the effect slash success of the hit stick in Madden 19. Now, guys, uh, there are a lot of different things that go into this, but these are the main four things that you're going to want to do when you're looking to deliver those hit sticks on defense to force fumbles, to knock down your opponent, things like that. So these are the things that we're going to be looking at today. Now, to start things off, we're going to be taking a look at a graph that tells us a little bit of information about how far away your player is when you hit your hit stick animation. So when you actually flick that right joystick and the distance that you are away from the ball carrier at that point in time does affect the effectiveness of the the uh, the hit stick itself. So that makes sense. Obviously, uh, if you're closer to them, it's probably going to be more effective. If you're further away, obviously not very effective. So you see there on the, the left side, you're looking at the penalty value. The bottom, you're looking at the distance in feet. So obviously, as you can see there, guys, the further away that you are, nine feet there on the far right, there's a huge penalty to the effectiveness of your hit stick if you're hitting that from far away. Now, anything from a foot to zero feet away, there's going to be no negative effect to it. So you're going to get the full power of your hit stick. But obviously, again, if you're further away, you're not going to be quite as effective. So just keep that in mind as you're going for your hit sticks. You want to get close to them as much as you can anyway. Now, the next thing that we're going to take a look at here has to do with the speed of your defensive player. So if you're moving at a really high speed, obviously your effectiveness of your hit stick is going to be fast, is going to be more effective. Um, so like, for example, if you're running all the way down the field on a kickoff and you hit the player going full speed, there's a good chance that you're going to force a fumble. So that's why we see a lot of hit stick fumbles on kickoffs. And that's actually my recommendation. If if you are running down the field uh, and you don't get blocked on a kickoff, if your team's kicking, the other team's returning. And again, if you don't take any sort of block and you're just at full speed going all the way down there, my opinion is that you should most likely try and go for the hit stick. Now, obviously, if you go for a hit stick and they do an evasive spin move or something like that, there's a good chance that you're going to get left in the dust. Uh, but that first one, in my opinion, you should try and set up a hit stick if you can, uh, because you're going to get the most effectiveness out of this if you're going at a really high speed. Now, it pretty much doesn't make a whole lot of difference if you're all the way down there between 0% of your max speed to 50% of your max speed. You're looking at very much, not much of a difference. Um, we're talking about like, uh, you know, a, a negative 15% effectiveness. Uh, so it's really not that important. But once you get above 50%, you see that that effectiveness spikes drastically. So you can get all the way up to a 20% extra bonus value, I guess is what they're they're describing it as. So 20% extra hit power essentially to your hit stick if you were going at 100 speed. Uh, and by 100 speed, that means 100% of your player's max speed. So that is very, very important to consider, guys. Um, you want to get going as quickly as you can all the way down the field when you are delivering those hit sticks. And, you know, if you just clicked onto a defensive lineman, for example, and he just disengaged from a block, he's probably not going to be going very fast. So the effectiveness of your hit stick is going to be reduced by a, a, at least a little bit, 10 to 20 percent, depending on, you know, exactly how fast that you're going at that point in time when you actually connect with the offensive player. So those are two things that we kind of already knew. We knew that the effectiveness was going to go up when you were going faster and when you're closer to the player. But here are two other things that are very important. This one right here, I think, is probably the most important thing that we need to actually consider. And that has to do with the, the hit power of the defensive player versus the strength of the offensive player. Now, that's what's really interesting here is that there is no direct you know, competing thing between uh, your your hit power mechanic. There's no direct competing attribute to that. Um, so what they basically did is they took strength for the offensive player. So if the offensive player has very low strength, one of your smaller running backs, like, um, and I guess I haven't actually looked to see, but I'm assuming a guy like Tariq Cohen, for example, probably doesn't have very high strength, right? So if, if he's a player that's very small and you're a player that is, uh, your defensive player is a player that has 
really high hit power, even if he's, you know, a, a guy that doesn't have a lot of strength, if he has high hit power, that's all that really matters. You're going to get an extra bonus for that. Now, the other thing to consider is that if you're a player that has a very low hit stick or a hit power, excuse me, attribute. So if you're, you know, a a, a small guy, a, a cornerback, for example, uh, he's probably not going to have very high hit power. And, and if you're trying to hit a guy with really high strength, for example, like a Cam Newton or um, a Derrick Henry is a, probably a better example, your effectiveness of your hit stick is not going to be very good. And that's why you're going to see a lot of those types of animations where the running back just completely plows over you when you go for your hit stick. So consider the player that you're actually controlling. You want to look for players that have high hit power on defense and you want to make sure that if you're lining up your hit sticks, that you're going up against a guy who you're going to at least have a higher hit power uh, attribute for than his strength, or at least uh, somewhat in line anyway. Uh, because you can see there, when you start to get down there in your your uh, hit power, if you're if you're uh, not very high with the hit power, your effectiveness is going to be very very low if the offensive player has good strength. So just try and keep that in mind as you're going for it. I know it's hard to do it on the fly, but these are the types of things that we make with our lineup. We look for the players that have the high hit power if we're looking to deliver a lot of hit sticks. And uh, when we click onto a cornerback, for example, we're going to be trying our best to go for just a, a more traditional standard wrap-up tackle versus a hit stick in most cases. there Obviously, there will be cornerbacks throughout the year in Mutt that are going to have high hit power, but for right now, that's not really the case. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about here is another one that I don't think a lot of people keep in mind when they're actually going for hit sticks or uh, when they're even when they're trying to assemble their team. And that has to do with your weight. Now, your actual player weight does matter a lot in this. Uh, so let me just give you an example. If you're looking at a defensive player like Luke Keekley, for example, and he's going up against, let's talk about another small running back, like uh, again, like Tariq Cohen, for example. He is going to outweigh Tariq Cohen by a very substantial amount. And it's even more when you're talking about some of the bigger linebackers than Luke Keekley. Um, there are some older guys, some of the legends that are going to be heavier and, and things like that. You want to try and get the guys that are going to be heavy. And because they are heavy, they're actually going to get bonuses for their hit stick. So that can be all the way up to 20% if he's 40 pounds or more ahead of the guy who he's hit sticking. So for example, I brought up the example of uh, Tariq Cohen running and Luke Keekley trying to deliver the hit stick. Now, Tariq Cohen is 179 pounds on his mutt card, whereas Luke Keekley is 238 pounds. So that's a huge difference, guys. I mean, that's that's basically a 60-pound difference. So you want to keep that in mind when you're when you're lining up those hit sticks because he is uh, in this case Luke Keekley is actually going to get a 20% bonus for his hit stick. And that is a huge difference, especially when you start to talk about if he gets the speed going, uh, if he's close to him, things like that. You're going to start to be able to add on some of these modifiers and the bonuses, and you're going to be able to make your hit sticks a lot more effective. And obviously, when you're looking at your running backs, you want to keep that in mind as well, or your even your wide receivers, your quarterbacks, things like that. Um, the guys that are heavier are going to be able to hold on to the ball better. They're not going to get hit sticked quite as hard. And that is actually something to really consider. Um, a lot of these smaller guys, like like your Tariq Cohen's, they're fast, but they don't have great size to them. And just like they would be in the NFL, if they were to get hit at full speed by a guy like Luke Keekley, they're going to go down pretty quickly. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind when you're actually assembling your team. Now, I used a pretty extreme example there of a big linebacker versus a very small running back, but even if it's as small as a one pound difference, you're actually going to get a bonus one way or another. So if your linebacker or the player that's making the tackle is actually smaller than the guy that they're tackling, that is also going to be a negative. Keep that in mind when you're setting up these defensive players. Uh, again, we talked about some of the smaller cornerbacks, guys that don't have great weight to their body. If they're going up and trying to tackle Derrick Henry, they're going to be negatively affected by this mechanic. So you can see there on the screen there, if Derrick, if Derrick Henry weigh, outweighs them by 40 pounds, Pounds, he's actually going to get a 20% bonus for his ability to break that hit stick and, and bounce off of you. So your hit stick is going to be substantially less effective if you're going up against a bigger guy who has uh, more weight. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind, guys. These are very, very important things, and they're going to help you build your team as well. These are not the only things that matter, but if all things are equal, for example, uh, if, if we're looking at, again, Tariq Cohen and another 
you know, smaller type of scat back, but somebody who is a little bit heavier, you want to try and get the guy who is heavier if you can, um, just because there's really no negative for the player being heavier. We haven't really seen anything come out yet that has to do with, um, you know, your weight. If, if you're heavier being less effective at anything, it's always pretty much being more effective. So again, if you can make your player heavier, you want them to be heavier. Obviously, you want them to keep the speed, though, because we saw that um, speed can be helpful as well, and acceleration helps you get to that max speed, things like that. But uh, overall, guys, those are kind of the most important factors with hit sticks. Hopefully, you learned something with this. If you did, make sure you drop a like on this video, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm going to be dropping a lot more information here, as well as gameplay footage, some pack openings, things like that. So I hope you guys will stop on back. Thanks for all the support since I've been coming back to the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Um, Honestly, I'm getting more views than I was expecting to. It's not anything groundbreaking or anything like that. It's not what I was uh, when I left, and it's not what I was in like Madden 15, for example. But again, it's a lot better than what I was expecting. So I really do appreciate it, guys. So uh, if you are enjoying these videos, please be sure to share them as well. That would greatly help me. Um, it'll help me with you know being inspired to continue to make videos. Not that I'm planning on walking away or anything, but um, you know, obviously, the more views, the the better you feel. You you just feel nice, right? So thanks again, guys, and I will uh, talk to you guys again next time. Bye-bye.